Dave Scott in our studio. Let's get right to him. Kurt Lawson of the West Bloomfield Police Department. Can you hear me now, Kurt? I can hear you, Dave. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Good to see you via Zoom and right here on the Splash. Uh, I can tell you're in your office working hard this morning at the West Bloomfield Police Department, keeping it safe. Awful good to have you here. And I, I tell people how lucky I am to be in this community. We got a great community, great people, but, but all of the leaders in, in law enforcement and our first responders and our government officials are all really nice people who can communicate pretty well, too. So it's really good to have you here. You, I mean, you could be hosting your own own television show. Look at you, Kurt Lawson. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, well, it's great to be here. It's Absolutely. Good. Good to, good to have you with us today. A couple of things I want to talk about. Um, first of all, the FBI every year issues crime figures for the entire nation, and, and we go and analyze that. Here in the state of Michigan, everybody assumes Detroit is a place with the most crime, but that's not true. Saginaw ended up stepping up the ladder. But the other good part of the story is that West Bloomfield and our surrounding communities have some of the lowest crime rates in the nation. And I wanted to have you on here and salute you. And I imagine that is part of the effort of law enforcement, but it, it's got to be part of a partnership with the community. Well, first of all, we our hats off to our men and women that are out there every single day. They're on the streets. They're going to every single community event that we can to try to bridge that, you know, that partnership that we, we think is just so important. And I think that plays such a role in keeping our crime rate down, whether it's property crime, violent crime. Uh, we consistently, over the past 26 years that I've been here, have been in that top uh, very being 1% of state agencies or state cities that have um, very low violent crime and property crime. So, but you're right, it's it's that partnership um, that we have with our community that if, if there is an incident, uh, we're not crime free here, but when there is an incident, uh, the community always steps up, they're willing to talk to us, they're willing to help. Uh, and that's what you need to have a successful law enforcement agency is you need that partnership with your community. Well, there's no question about it. And, uh, you know, here in West Bloomfield, it, it we're, it's, we're bucking a national trend because all you got to do is turn on the news and you hear about crime problems in municipalities all over the country. And, and, of course, it may be getting blown up for political reasons right before the election. But we have been seeing crime issues. And, uh, and here in our community, even as it grows and we see our population growing we still are one of the safest places to live and and that's because I, it's got to be because of hard work and and everybody caring that's exactly true and you're right we have seen especially 2020 was a horrendous year uh, in this country obviously we had covid uh violent crime went up 30 percent uh in urban areas 20 percent in rural areas but really here in West Bloomfield, we're very fortunate. Uh, we really were stable. Uh, we didn't see much of an uptick in violent crime or property crime. Uh, the one thing that we've seen a little bit of an uptick in the last couple of years, and it kind of goes with it, what's going on nationally is uh, we're having a lot of stolen motor vehicles. Uh, so, you know, we encourage our residents to make sure that uh, they park their vehicles inside when they can or properly light your vehicles uh, with lighting at night or, you know, put a camera, ring camera on your house. That always helps us uh, when we do an investigation. Well, th that is nice. And, you know, I think one of the other things that we hear um, often from law enforcement and, and other people is not to leave conspicuous items in your car that might be attractive to somebody. Um, that just is an added incentive, right, for someone to break into your vehicle. Absolutely. And like you said, this is a very safe community, but there are still individuals that are going out in the neighborhoods night after night and they're seeing who's going to leave their cars open or what valuables they can see within the car. So if you can do whatever you can on your end to deter them, bring your computer inside, your cell phone, here's a nice idea. Don't leave your keys in the car. We've seen that several <laughs> times. That, that does not help us. Yeah, you know, the days have changed. I grew up in West Bloomfield, and you know, listen, I grew up on Maple Road. There was no Deerfield subdivision for people that live right in that area. The very few of the subs were here. It was farming community uh, when I was born 63 years ago here in West Bloomfield. And we didn't even have locks on our doors, but it is a different time, and, and there are a lot more people here, and you do need to be, uh, be careful. So be vigilant. Lock your, your doors. Do what you need to do, and uh, I like all of your advice. And, and just one other final piece of advice, Kurt. I assume it's also important to help the police. If you see something going on, don't be afraid. Pick up the phone and call 911. 
Absolutely. The chief says this every time he's in public. If you see something, say something. Let us know. Even if it looks like, oh, it's probably nothing. We would rather come out, uh, investigate it, make sure it is nothing. Uh, you know, if you don't call us and it's something big, uh, you're going to have a hard time ever forgiving yourself. So we are willing to come out to any call. Uh, we get, you know, 20,000 calls a year here in West Bloomfield where we dispatch our officers. The community, hats off to the community that have invested so much into law enforcement, into public safety. And I think we've seen a great return on their investment. I saw a note on Facebook this morning. We, we started to publicize this. Uh, October 29th, DEA National Drug Take Back Day. And uh, we're going to be participating on that in that here in West Bloomfield as well. Uh, every year it's amazingly successful. I know other agencies, uh, Orchard Lake participates in it as well, but we, we get pounds and pounds of prescription drugs turned into us. And uh, it's great just to get that out of your, your house, especially if you have young kids or if you have someone that's a family member that maybe has an addiction problem. If you're not currently using that medication or you have old medication, bring it to the West Bloomfield Police Department, bring it to the Orchard Lake Police Department, and we'll take care of it for you. Yeah, I mean, they used to just, we used to just flush it down the toilet, but the DEA and police organizations, they don't do that anymore. Believe it or not, it creates a problem for our water systems, and it's not really the right way to get rid of Let's go um, back into our water system. You do have some happy fish here and there, but really, <laughs> we, we, we we recommend that you bring it to us or bring it to your local pharmacy to properly dispose of it. All right. Well, you know, I, I love the police, but I, I, I love Laker football a little bit more. Lakers, Southfield, A&T. You got a prediction for the final score tonight, Kurt Lawson? Well, I'm always going to go with the Lakers. Uh, outstanding team, but I think they're going to win by uh, 14 tonight. All right, 14 points. Kurt Lawson, good to see you. Thank you for joining us here on The Splash and taking some time with us today.